Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Redeem Christian Lifestyle. Tonight, we're going to be discussing right responses and remedies for a restless reality. This is pretty much uh, going to be a survival kit for this pandemic that we're going through, COVID-19. And I just want to alleviate your fears and have you guys focus on what God showed me that we should pretty much be focusing on during this time period as I was reading through his word this weekend. Um, this is a Bible study on Hebrews chapter 3, Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7, Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9, and 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 3 through 7, but also multiple other scriptures. This is going to be a pretty long presentation, guys, because I wanted to make sure that you had all the information available to get you through this time. And I wanted to pray for us really quickly, so please have your heads bowed and hear my prayer and I hope that this helps you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that everybody that's listening right now understands what you want them to do out of this presentation, understands what you want them to focus on, understands that you are available to them at all times, anywhere and everywhere, that they can pray to you anywhere in regards to this, and that there is nothing stronger than you. There is no disease that's stronger than you. There's nothing that can come against you. There's nothing that you can't dissipate and stop with your power, and for them to have faith in your power, and for them to be filled with Holy Spirit power to fight against this and to go against this and to continue to spread your words to others who have not heard you yet, who do not know of you yet, who do not know that they can rely on you yet for this type of thing or in any type of difficulty or in anything good or bad in their lives. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So guys, during this difficult time, there's six courses of action that we must take as Christians or soon to be Christians. You'll see why I'm saying that in a few minutes. Number one, we have to get closer to God and the Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Number two, cleanliness is next to godliness. So that means our surroundings and also our insides and also ourselves during this time period. I mean, we should always be clean all the time, but especially right now. Don't worry and stay healthy. Be strong and courageous. We have to stand firm in the face of apostasy and also pray. Everyone, open up your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. That's Hebrews chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. Therefore, holy brothers and sisters who share in the heavenly calling, Consider Jesus the apostle and high priest of our confession. He was faithful to the one who appointed him, just as Moses was in all God's household. For Jesus is considered worthy of more glory than Moses, just as the builder has more honor than the house. Now every house is built by someone, but the one who built everything is God. Moses was faithful as a servant in all God's household, as a testimony to what would be said in the future. But Christ was faithful as a son over his household. And we are that household if we hold on to our confidence and the hope in which we boast. So everyone, let's continue on in Hebrews chapter 3, verses 7 through 12. That's Hebrews chapter 3, verses 7 through 12. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion 
on the day of testing in the wilderness, where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my works for 40 years. Therefore, I was provoked to anger that with that generation and said, they always go astray in their hearts and they have not known my ways. So I swore in my anger that they will not enter my rest. Watch out brothers and sisters so that there won't be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. Now let's continue on in Hebrews chapter 3 verses 13 through 19. That's Hebrews chapter 3 verses 13 through 19. But encourage each other daily while it is still called today so that none of you is hardened by sin's deception. For we have become participants in Christ if we hold firmly until the end the reality that we had at the start. As it is said today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. For who heard and rebelled? Wasn't it all who came out of Egypt under Moses? With whom was God angry for 40 years? Wasn't it those, wasn't it with those who sinned, whose bodies fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, if not to those who disobeyed? So we see that they were unable to enter because of unbelief. So we should use this difficult time to get closer to God and the Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. If you're already a believer, use this time to get closer to God by reading his word and studying the Bible. Ask him to activate the Holy Spirit within you to find out what your spiritual gifts are, whether that's prophecy, evangelistic gifts, teaching gifts, whatever those are. This is a perfect time. I know a lot of you are staying home. Some of you might even feel sick and you can't go into work. This is a perfect time to meditate on his word, and that could also help heal you. We'll talk about that later. Learn about his characteristics. I did a presentation on this recently about God and his characteristics. You could go and check that out during your free time. Be repentant, according to 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 through 10, and share the gospel and make disciples of all nations, according to Matthew 28, verse 19. Now, I know that we all have to be very protective of ourselves during this time, but definitely share the gospel. This is the perfect time to, hear, to have others hear the goodness of God and know that they can rely on him during this time. God is using this to test us and see how many of us will still believe in him and his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, during this difficult time? How many of us will fold? How many of us will continue to stay and persevere till the end? Don't rebel like the Israelites did against the law and mercy of God and never inherited the promise for which they were delivered from Egypt. That's according to Exodus chapter 17, verses 1 through 7, Numbers chapter 14, verses 22 through 30. And also, of course, Hebrews chapter 3, verses 15 through 19. If you're not a believer yet, use this time as an invitation to become a believer. So use this presentation or other presentations that I have or even other teachers out there that are very good and solid to get closer to God at this time. He's what you can rely on. Yes, of course, you should rely on your doctors and your nurses out there that are working hard. And there's some great Christian nurses and great Christian doctors and doctors in general that you can go to for help. But you need a savior. And the only one that can save you is Jesus Christ during this time. Don't harden your hearts when you hear the gospel being preached to you at any time during COVID-19, during this ordeal. This is the perfect time. He is giving us mercy and grace. He's giving you guys mercy and grace to come to him right now before the end comes. Once you do hear the gospel, learn more about God and his word. The Bible is readily available to all. So you have cell phones, a lot of you. Um, it's available on your cell phone for free through multiple apps. And... Of course, you can still buy the, the um, Bible um, online as well, even if you can't go into the stores right now because of what's going on.
Everyone, turn your Bibles to Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 24 through 30. That's Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 24 through 30. For I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and will bring you into your own land. I will also sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and all your idols. I will give you a new heart and a new spirit within you. I will remove your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will place my spirit within you cause you and cause you to follow my statutes and carefully observe my ordinances. You will live in the land that I gave your fathers. You will be my people and I will be your God. I will save you from all your uncleanliness. I will summon the grain and make it plentiful. I will not bring famine on you. I will also make the fruit of the trees and the produce of the field plentiful so that you will no longer experience reproach amongst the nations on account of famine. So everyone, turn your Bible to Matthew chapter 23, verse 25 through 28, and also bookmark James chapter 4, verses 7 through 8. Once again, that's Matthew 23, verses 25 through 28, and bookmark James chapter 4, verses 7 through 8. Matthew chapter 23, verses 25 through 28. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! You clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup, so that the outside of it may also become clean. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! You are like whitewashed tombs, which appear beautiful on the outside but inside are full of the bones of the dead and every kind of impurity. In the same way, on the outside, you seem righteous to people, but inside you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. James chapter four, verses seven through eight. Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. So what is revealed here is that cleanliness is next to godliness. We have to stay clean in every way possible during this time period. God provided a place for you to live. According to Matthew chapter 6, verses 30, verse 33, meaning seek ye first the kingdom of God and everything will be provided unto you. Part of that provision is where you live, whether that's a, a house or an apartment, it doesn't matter at this point. But we have to make sure that we take showers and that we keep ourselves clean and that we keep our surroundings clean. I mean, he gave you a house, he gave you an apartment, he gave you a place with a bathroom, use it. Um, ask God to place his Holy Spirit within you. Once again, to activate it according to Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26, and also to cleanse you of all other impurities such as idolatry, because that can open up doors to demons and evil spirits, which can literally make you sick and also open the doors to unclean spirits that could also make you sick, both literally and figuratively. Wash your hands literally of all germs and figuratively of all sin as much as possible. I know that we all fall short, but we want to make sure to be repentant as much as possible, according to James chapter 4, verse 8. Believers should stay clean on the inside as well as on the outside. We should not be double-minded at all. That's according to Matthew chapter 23, verse 28, and also James chapter 4, verse 8. So we shouldn't just be clean on the outside and be sparkly on the outside, but be rotten on the inside because God sees the inside. He sees everything and anything that you're doing. So just because you look spiffy on the outside, if you're demonic on the inside, it doesn't matter. God will see all that and yes, you will be punished for it. And again, that could also still make you sick 
even though you don't look sick on the outside. Resist the enemy and evil spirits and they will flee from you. Do not give, th give them any legal access to you at this time. Draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. So stay close to God, guys. Do not just stay away from evil as much as possible. Do not go near evil and evil spirits and evil things at this time or e watch evil things or any of that stuff, because that can also impact your insides and your immunity as well. So everybody go to Proverbs chapter 3 verses 6 through 8. That's Proverbs chapter 3 verses 6 through 8. In all of your ways know him and he will make your path straight. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. This will be healing for your body and strengthening for your bones. So everybody go to Philippians chapter 4 verses 4 through 9. That's Philippians chapter 4 verses 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your graciousness be known to everyone. The Lord is near, meaning that he's coming soon. Don't worry about anything, but in everything, through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any moral excellence, and if there is anything praiseworthy, dwell on these things. Do what you have learned and received and heard from me and seen in me and the God of peace will be with you. So although this is a very hard time for everyone, I understand that we shouldn't worry and we should stay healthy as believers. And if you're not a believer, please become one, like I said before. Follow the word of God and stay away from evil. This will decrease your stress and anxiety tremendously. And when I mean evil, I mean things like erroneous fear-mongering news. Always start with your Bible and prayer and God will lead you to the correct information. The internet is full of a lot of information that is not true, even according to doctors and nurses, like your trusted doctor, your trusted nurse. Instagram pages were mostly Misinformation is posted almost every five minutes, for instance. That's another example. People who take time and seek the Lord will be careful about the news that they are posting regarding COVID-19. So they won't just post every single thing that they see because everything that you see about this is not necessarily true. So people who actually take time and seek the Lord will actually use the wisdom of God to to know what to post and what information to give to other people that will edify them, that will help them, that will get them to food, shelter, whatever that they need during this time, as opposed to just putting unnecessary fear in their hearts and their heads. Rejoice in the Lord and pray. We as believers should be glad that we don't have to rely on ourselves during this time. We can rely on God and we need to rely on God more than ever before, more than ever before. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard our hearts and minds. So once we rely on him, that peace, and once we rely and we pray to him, that peace will come over us and we'll be at peace. And we can pray anytime, as, as I said before in my previous presentation, he's everywhere. So that's in your car, in your home, wherever you are, you can be praying. Whatever is honorable, whatever is just, and whatever is pure and lovely and commendable, and if there's any moral excellence to it and it's praiseworthy, we should dwell in those things, meaning reading and studying the word of God, spreading the gospel to others, helping others, but of course being safe and clean while doing so, eating right, exercising, working as unto the Lord, meaning continuing to work honestly and earnestly, 
in whatever job, whatever capacity that you're in right now, whether you're a doctor, nurse, you work at McDonald's, it doesn't matter. Continue to work unto the Lord because that is a good thing and he will bless the work of your hands. So everyone, turn to Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. That's Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now you and all the people prepare to cross over the Jordan to the land I am giving the Israelites. I have given you every place where the sole of your foot treads, just as I promised Moses. Your territory will be from the wilderness and Lebanon to the great river, the Euphrates River, all the land of the Hittites and west to the Mediterranean Sea. No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. I will be with you just as I was with Moses. I will not leave you or abandon you. So everyone, let's continue on in Joshua chapter 1, verses 6 through 9. That's Joshua chapter 1, verses 6 through 9. Be strong and courageous, for you will distribute the land I swore to their fathers to give them as an inheritance. Above all, be strong and very courageous, to observe carefully the whole instruction my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or the left, so that you will have success wherever you go. This book of instruction must not depart from your mouth. You are to meditate on it day and night so that you may carefully observe everything written in it. For then you will prosper and succeed in whatever you do. Haven't I commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Now everyone, turn to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 3 through 7. That's 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 3 through 7. I thank God whom I serve with a clear conscience as my ancestors did, when I constantly remember you in my prayers night and day. Remembering your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I recall your sincere faith that first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and now I am convinced is in you also. Therefore, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but one of power, love, and sound judgment. So what's revealed here is that during this time, we should be strong and courageous. We must stay strong and we should not be weary in well-doing. That's according to Galatians chapter 6, verses 9 through 10. God is with us at all times, especially as believers. We must turn to him and his word when we have feelings of weakness and or stress. Don't rely on yourself or your own flesh at this time. Use God as your strength, basically. Use the Holy Spirit in you as your strength. This disease is no match against the power of God and nothing and no one is stronger than him. Nothing and no one. Okay, so we can really rely on praying to him and having him deflect that off of us. Of course, take your medicines and take, you know, whatever else, you know, your doctor prescribes to you that you should be taking at this time. I'm not saying not to stay away from that. Absolutely not. <laughs> because God also gave, you know, us doctors for this reason. Luke was even a doctor as well. Um, and God is also the creator of everything. So there's nothing that he can't demolish. There's nothing that he can't destroy. There's nothing and no one that he can't build up as well. God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and sound mind. And by the way, these are all fruits of the spirit. So through the Holy Spirit that's within us, we have this. So we should not be afraid at this time. 
In fact, we should rely on God for our strength at all times, but especially during this time. So everyone turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 1 through 9. That's 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 1 through 9. But know this, hard times will come in the last days. For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, proud, denemi, disobedient to parents, ungrateful and unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, without love for what is good, traitors, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to the form of godliness but denying its power. Avoid these people. For among them are those who worm their way into households and deceive gullible women, overwhelmed by sins and led astray by a variety of passions, always learning and never able to come to a knowledge of the truth. Just as Johns and Jambers resisted Moses, so these also resist the truth. They are men who are corrupt in mind and worthless in regard to the faith. But they will not make further progress, for their foolishness will be clear to all, as was the foolishness of Jean's and Jambers. So what God is revealing to us here is that we should stand firm in the face of apostasy and other end time issues. We are in the end times right now. And he is giving us instruction as to what we should do during these times. Number one, we have to avoid people who are self-obsessed, ungrateful, unholy, or they're idolaters or traitors as believers. We should avoid all that. They can make you stressed, which can lead to illness. They could also make you uneasy. They can impart their evilness on you, which again can lead to depression, disorder, and illness. So stay away from that as much as possible, unless you're evangelizing them and trying to, you know, uh, teach them the gospel or teach them the word of God in any type of way. You should really stay away from those people because they're not going to help you during this time period at all or any period, to be honest with you. Avoid people who hold to the form of godliness, but deny its power. People who say that they believe in God, but don't believe in the following, his power to get us through anything and everything, the power of prayer, the power of your prayers, the power of their own prayers, the power of anybody's prayers working, and the power of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. Stay away from these people because you know what? These people also decrease your faith in God, decrease your faith in the word of God, make you confused, you know? And then also avoid people who are always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the, of the truth. This can lead you to confusion and doubt. These are people who have an intellectual understanding of God, but exude zero power of the Holy Spirit or don't have a spiritual understanding of the word of God. So they read the word of God in an intellectual manner. Um, they over intellectualize God. You know, this is not math. This is not science. It's, it's not that. This is a very, very much a spiritual discipline. And when somebody lacks that, you want to stay away from that because that can confuse you and what the Holy Spirit is telling you in the word of God. People who are not examining the news that they are spreading in, in, regarding end time issues before posting them. So people who are not clearly reading what they're reading or understanding what they're reading, but yet they're posting it, don't take that as truth because they're learning, but they're not really absorbing and they did not start most likely, more than likely, nine times out of 10 did not start with the word of God and also avoid false prophets and of course, false teachers as much as possible because that can confuse you as well. So everyone, open up your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 13. That's Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 13. And if you notice, I switched gears a bit and used the Amplified Bible for this part because I really, really like the way this um, 
part of the scripture sounds and we're getting to the point where I'm going to talk about how important prayer is. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his boundless might. Put on the full armor of God so that you may be able to stand up against all schemes and strategies and deceits of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, put on the complete armor of God so that you will be able to successfully resist and stand your ground in the evil day of danger and having done everything that the crisis demands to stand firm in your place, fully prepared, immovable and victorious. And let's continue on in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 14 through 18. That's Ephesians chapter 6, verses 14 through 18. So stand firm and hold your ground, having tightened the wide band of truth around your waist and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having strapped on your feet the gospel of peace in preparation to face the enemy with firm footed stability and readiness produced by the good news. Above all, lift up the protective shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one and take on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. With all prayer and petition, pray with specific requests at all times, on every occasion and in every season in the spirit and with this in view and stay alert with all perseverance and petition interceding in prayer for all God's people. Everyone turn to Psalm 91 verses 1 through 8. That's Psalm 91 verses 1 through 8. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will remain secure and rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will save the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will save you from the trap of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you and completely protect you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a wall and also a buckler. You will not be afraid of the terror of the night nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noon. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but danger will not come near you. You will only look on with your eyes and witness the divine repayment of the wicked. As you watch safely from the shelter of the Most High, by the way. Now turn to Psalm 91 verses 9 through 16. That's Psalm 91 verses 9 through 16. So we're going to finish up here with our scriptures tonight. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place, no evil will befall you, nor will any plague come near your dwelling or tent. For he will command his angels in regards to you to protect and defend and guard you in all of your ways of obedience and service. So you must obey and also serve God as well. They will lift you up in your hands so that you do not even strike your feet against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he set his love on me, therefore I will save him. I will set him securely on high because he knows my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and I will let him see my salvation. So last but not least, we all as believers and even non-believers should pray. First, you should pray for protection, meaning pray Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18, which we just went through. This will do the following to protect you. It will activate the Holy Spirit, according to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, and protect you from all schemes and strategies of the evil one while you're in prayer. 
that sin, sickness, disease, evil spirits. Remember that we're not fighting against flesh and blood, but against spiritual forces of wickedness, according to Ephesians chapter 6, verses 11 through 12. And it'll also help us to stand strong and increase our faith in God and his power. That's according to Ephesians chapter 6, verses 14 through 18. Then use the best medicine against COVID-19. That is Psalm 91. And notice that it's 19 backwards in a way. So very interesting. But first, you have to be a believer and you have to love God and Jesus Christ and dwell in the shelter of the Most High. You must also believe in all of his power, not some of it, not part of it, none of it, all of it. You have to believe in all of God's power and Jesus Christ and the power of Jesus Christ as well and the power of the Holy Spirit as well. He will save you from all evil, danger and wickedness that started or came from this pandemic that's according to Psalm 91, verses 3 through 10. And it will also save you from the actual sickness. Plagues and pestilence are synonyms for sickness and is mentioned like four times in Psalm 91. Plagues is mentioned twice and I believe pestilence is mentioned two to three times, something like that. He will send his angels in regards to you in all of your ways of obedience and service. So there is a requirement. You do have to obey him. <laughs> You do have to obey him and serve him, you know, and he has to see that obedience to send his angels next to you and around you. So that is part of it. And that's according to Psalm 91 verses 11 through 13. He's the Lord of hosts. He's the Lord of angel army. So he can send forth warrior angels. He can send forth healing angels. He can send forth ministering angels to minister to you. He can send them if you believe. Yes, he absolutely will. And if you obey him, he absolutely will do that. And I've experienced it myself, honestly. And I know that, oh my goodness, that was definitely God. So that's the end of the presentation. I hope that this blessed you all. And please, if you need any help or need any support during this time, we are available at all times. Text us, email us, however you can reach us on Instagram, YouTube, anything. Just contact us during this difficult time. Thank you for joining us. God bless you and have a blessed and safe week.